guys, welcome back to our messy house where our house has become increasingly less messy as over three years ago we became minimalist and started slow living and it has changed our lives forever. Hi, my name is Juliana and today I wanted to chat a little bit about the convictions that I have had in my life recently and the journey that we have started as a family to not rid electronics but have a healthier relationship with electronics based on a lot of research and a lot of factors in our lives that we would really like to change. So today I wanted to have a quick chat about it. Now before I have this chat, I wanted to have a disclaimer as well. I have an iPhone, I have TVs plugged into the wall, we have computers, iPads, I obviously post online, so I'm on my computer editing, I'm posting online, I'm interacting there. And so to say that I don't have any electronics in my home or in my lifestyle is a complete lie. I have plenty of electronics in my lifestyle. Um, there was this conviction recently when I was listening to a podcast from Jonathan Holt about the Anxious Children um, book he just wrote, and in that, I the conviction that I've probably had for a long while kind of kind of hit me extra hard when the research <laughs> backed the fact that it, it was not the best choice for our family, and so. I am on this slow journey to replacing electronics and my kids' electronic time that they were spending um, with books and school and learning and projects, and there's a lot of ways that I am doing that. First, I wanted to start off saying that this journey I have started and stopped like a bunch of times and I've tried to get rid of electronics and I've done all this and I'm like, oh, we just need to actually get rid of them 100%. like sell the TVs and the iPads, everything, get rid of it all because that's the only way I'm going to be able to say no because I, I just, I use it all the time. Like, you know what I mean? I let my kids have iPad time when I'm making dinner or whatnot and used to in our family, um, if I was doing a medical treatment on my baby, then my toddler would have an iPad time so that I could be the medical uh, mama that I needed to be. And then if I was doing um, something over here, then the medical one, you know, who was sick and he couldn't get up and play, then he would be watching TV and whatnot. And our life has kind of switched, right? I think during that season, um, I think I needed that electronics, or at least I thought I needed it. And I think it really, really helped with what I was going through. And I, I do think that I used it too much, but I also am grateful that it was there during that time. Um, because it not only helped me um, during my sleepless medical nights and um, that time to just kind of feel connected to the world and also um, able to stay awake during medical procedures and whatnot after not having slept for months on end, um, being able to get up in the middle of the night and do these medical procedures that I needed to do because I was not only a day nurse for my child but a night nurse and I just really never slept and so to keep my brain stimulated and awake I would obviously the rest of the house is asleep even the person I'm doing treatments on is asleep and so I needed to stimulate my brain and be awake and there was really if I was reading a book or listening to like a book um, that wouldn't have worked the same way. So I am grateful that electronics are there. Obviously I post content on YouTube as well. And so obviously that's going to be in my life. And so we do have electronics inside of our home, but I will say that as time has went on, as the medical procedures have um, nearly stopped, as I enter in this part of motherhood where I'm out of that medical era. I'm getting my not only my body healthy but my family back healthy and getting us to a point where we are truly living life again. I have found myself kind of falling back on like I'm making dinner I'll let them have a show or something and recently obviously like I listened to Jonathan Holt's podcast where he was talking about the anxious child book um, and reading that book. I felt a huge conviction because I definitely, definitely was using um, electronics as like almost a babysitter or like a break, like a coffee break for myself, but I wasn't really having coffee. I was making dinner or doing house chores or whatever I needed to do. Um, but I definitely was using it for that way. And I was doing a huge disservice, not only to myself, but my kids. But in saying that, um, saying just like, oh, take away all the electronics, that also 
is extremely difficult to ask of anyone, especially a mother um, who has a lot on her plate. And so in this, this, this task actually takes a lot of the mother's time to get rid of electronics in the beginning. You have to constantly have an invitation to have something else to do. So you could say, yeah, I'm just going to make my kids figure it out and like find a toy to play with, but they're going to find themselves harassing you nine times out of 10 because kid, kids just don't entertain themselves for these extreme amount of times all the time, right? They're always bored. They always need to find something. It's very healthy for a child to be bored. There's tons of research on that because they become more creative and adapt to the environment and start exploring things and just kind of do things on their own, become more in independent. And those are great life skills that they're learning through that. But there's also this reality check that if I am trying to make dinner and I'm not allowing them to have electronics and it's kind of that hour of the day where they're grumpy and so they are fighting each other. And so I'm not able to make dinner because I'm running in there because they're very discontent with each other because it is the end of the day and they're done. And so in that, saying that, I do have to prep ahead of time in getting rid of, if I'm not gonna use the iPad, if I'm not gonna use these things, which I still do use sometimes, but I'm trying to steer away from it as much as possible and to the point where I would love to see it only be a weekend thing, like an hour on the weekends. But we're not quite there yet. But what I have been doing lately is setting out a craft or an invitation for them to do a project at the table, which is right next to my kitchen, um, where I can be cooking dinner and interacting with them as well. And that is a lot more work for me because not only do I have to set up a craft to kind of help them with the craft, I like it to be as independent as possible, but um, two-year-olds and independency in crafts is they're going to paint the table and do I really want to clean the entire table before dinner? Not really. Um, but in that I do have to set up, clean up all the craft that we are doing before dinner because they typically do it at the table or set up and clean up the toy that I'm having them play with over here or you know whatever I'm doing I do have to go the extra mile and pre-plan and have an invitation ready for them so that the fights so that the interruptions do not continue and I think that's why getting rid of electronics is incredibly hard, especially for stay at home moms. My kids are home all day long with me. I have them 100% of the time. There's really no time in the week that I do not have my kids except for like four hours when I am at work, once a week. And so I legitimately have my kids all day, every day, um, with me at home and so they're not like going to school and coming back and going to daycare and doing all of these other things outside the house they are here and so taking away that electronics also adds me those couple minutes that I wasn't having to be present obviously I'm always present but I wasn't having to be constantly helping and on and have like all of these crafts and whatnot laid out for them sorry I keep pointing to the table because the table's right here but I, I didn't have to do that. And so I definitely was using electronics as a much, feels like a much needed break that I needed. But I have this conviction where I am called to this season to be a stay at home mom to my kids. And in that season, that is me uh, giving up and laying down all of my preferences aside and all of these breaks that I might want and um, all of the human nature to want to have a break and need a break um, and kind of lay those things down and in this season focus on being in this season because it is such a short season even though it feels incredibly long. Um, I truly believe that I'm called to be a stay-at-home homeschooling mom right now in this season and that's really working for our family and because of that I get to dive completely in and um, go ahead and take away the electronics slowly but surely and be 110% on 110% of the time. And that's really difficult, but it's also a challenge for me to grow in myself and to um, really walk out this journey and this calling that I have to raise these children. And in that, I have found a huge strength in myself um, as well as checking myself because I cannot be listening to a podcast 
all of the watching a YouTube show while I'm cooking dinner because that is not fair for one um, if I get to watch it and them and also I don't want my kids to see me on my phone I had a book on my phone actually I was just thinking this I had a book on my phone and I was reading it a lot because I was really invested in this book and it, it was a really good book um, and I was reading it a lot and I was constantly scrolling it. and then I realized the view that my kids had was not me reading a hardcover book it was my face in a phone um, and I realized that they saw my phone in my face like even when we were sitting outside because I was so into this book and so I decided I was like no more books on my phone even though they're free from the library to read on your phone um, I was like I can go to the library <laughs> I just spit. I can go to the library and pick them up um, and read them and I can purchase some books and read them and I started investing into books more and more so that instead of a phone in my face or a computer in my face or me watching a TV screen that my kids see me reading a hardcover book in front of them and that has changed the game for our family. Sorry I just had to get a new battery but so I wanted to share this journey with you as we're walking to the journey of way less a lot the electronics like i have set the electronics to only be able to walk, consume an hour a day and i would love to actually make that only an hour on the weekends and so i'm slowly but surely walking the kids back because i have allowed in the past for them to have more electronic time than an hour a day yes um i'm gonna be truthful and honest which i feel like most people are not my kids definitely consume more than an hour a day accumulative of electronics and so now they don't this is new um but i am i have put a lock on the um electronics and my kids have always asked before they did things but other than the computer that we're using for school where we do um, a math video like an actual dvd we stick in as well as um, our language arts has a bit of app work um, other than that which I'm not counting in the hour of electronic time because it's really something that's needed um, but the rec time I guess for electronics for all of us I have windled down to an hour a day currently and then I intend to push that lower and lower until it's just an hour on the weekends or whenever we have like a family movie night we can watch a movie together um, and something that I've done for myself is I've deleted all social media apps off my phone other than YouTube because I feel like that's kind of my job and so I just have that hour lock on it um, per day and then I will slowly but surely assess if I even need it on my phone anymore at all or if I can just transfer completely over to my computer to where I actually have to physically get on and then I am also trying to not edit or um, be on my computer unless my kids are down for a nap or they are not present so trying to not be on electronics when my kids are present pretty much at all there's one day a month where I have to do a lot of medical calls pretty much takes I would say six hours of my day I get to do that one time a month so that day is excluded um, from me being present with my kids on the phone and whatnot but I'm trying to dwindle down everything else to where I am almost never on my phone at all in front of the kids um, and another thing my kids do do is they're always welcome to FaceTime any family members so they're always welcome to have a conversation with someone else and um, call them as long as we're not like at nap time or do currently in the middle of doing school um, they're always welcome to FaceTime family members or call them and have that relationship with them and so that's always an option for them they can borrow my phone and do that um, and that won't take up their hour but other than that that's where we're starting and I do have to go above and beyond like I said I have to constantly have new like a big list of plans yesterday we did we made homemade pizza we made um, homemade jello both of those completely from scratch at different times of the day we did two different science experiments we did an entire day of school even though it technically was not one of our school days at this point we have started doing school six to seven days a week um, because school doesn't take that long for this age and um, 
because school homeschool doesn't take that long for this age and so we've been doing some sort of school every single day of the week and it's just because we have so much time and I've found that I've had so much time to do other things because I'm not looking at my phone I've also moved my apps around so I can very much so pinpoint if I'm getting on my phone because my brain would just naturally do it and then I'm like wait it's not there anymore and then I'm like why am I trying to get on this app there's no value in this I need to go do the dishes and so I have definitely set up these fail safes and I'd love to share that journey with you so this is the beginning of our journey step one was to put a lock on all of the devices and put an hour lock so once a day an hour long lock Otherwise, I have to set up activities or have different things and the kids have to have independent playtime where they entertain themselves as much as possible. And we are learning and growing and changing as a family and it feels really good. It feels right. And we're going to continue on this journey and get our family to a place that is comfortable for us with electronics. Um, and if you haven't, read The Anxious Generation because I think it'll change your life as well as listen to anything Jonathan Holt because so far what I've seen from him has been really amazing. Thanks for watching my video. Let me know if you have any questions. I want to share more in depth of this journey and what crafts and whatnot that I'm doing with my kids to replace electronics. Um, so my camera battery keeps dying on me, which is incredibly frustrating. So I just wanted to close out this video here and say that I want to share a more in depth journey. Um, and this is just the starting process of letting you know what's happening, what my convictions were, and kind of how I'm traveling through this journey. And so I will be sharing individual videos of like a list of activities that I just have on a rotation for during this time and just all of the things that I'm doing to replace um, electronics and just tons and tons of read out louds. I have started our own library right here. We have started to get to like whole book series. I'm just going, if we like the first book, I go ahead and I order the entire book series. And it's taking a lot on my behalf, right? Because neither one of my kids fully read yet. And so I have to read all of those read out louds to my kids. But in that, um, that is my responsibility as a mom. And I'm taking that responsibility back, taking it off of the electronics and the iPads, doing way more outside time, even though we're already doing outside time we can do more um, and just getting rid of all of those electronic times and replacing them with a whole happy family memory um, learning wholesome times and so if you like this comment please subscribe to my channel comment down below on any questions you might have I know this is just a general broad uh, video I would love to go in depth on certain aspects of it so if you want to see any certain aspect please let me know um, and I'll see you guys next time Bye, guys.